Hi everybody. So to be honest, I don't know of a single child who isn't absolutely fascinated with fossils and dinosaurs. In fact, when I think about it, most adults are. Britain, which can be considered to be the birthplace of paleontology, has some world-class fossil sites. Of course, one of these is an area on the south coast of England known as the Jurassic Coast. 150 million years ago, the land was ruled by dinosaurs like the T-Rex. But of course, there were dinosaurs in the sea, and these were sea monsters in the truest sense of sea monster. And one of these giant sea monsters was discovered there quite recently at Kimmeridge Bay in Dorset. So to my mind, there's nothing more exciting than cracking open a rock and discovering something like this. And of course, the discovery of the giant sea monster, well, that's an adventure in itself. Embedded in the rocks, halfway up a cliff, they found the skull of a pliosaur. A pliosaur was an apex predator that lived around 155 million years ago. It was a huge animal, somewhere in the region of 10 to 15 metres long, which is about as long as two double-decker buses. The skull they found was 6 feet 5 inches or 1.96 metres long. The animal it came from probably weighed around 45 tonnes, which is almost 100,000 pounds. And its distinguishing characteristics are a short neck with the elongated head, and more importantly, large hind flippers to complement the fore flippers, so it had four flippers in total. They were carnivorous with a crushing bite grip, about two and a half times that of a great white shark. The long powerful jaws carried many sharp triangular teeth, and their prey probably included fish, sharks, ichthyosaurus, uh, dinosaurs, and other pliosaurs. With bulk, strength and great weapons in its spear-like teeth, you would think that this would be enough to maintain the pliosaur as an apex predator. But strangely enough for predators, most hunts fail. Something like 9 out of 10 hunts don't succeed, with 1 out of 10 being successful, because one other key element is necessary, and that is speed. And the big question has been, how did such a massive beast like the pliosaur propel itself through the water? Water, with anything like the speed and agility it would need in order to be successful. Today, the closest match to a pliosaur flipper is in the penguin. When a penguin's underwater, it moves like a rocket. It can swim faster than a man can run, up to speeds of 20 miles an hour. Under slow motion, what is revealed that penguins swim by using their flippers like the wings of a bird. And by twisting their wings as they flap, they can propel themselves forward on the upstroke and on the downstroke. But pliosaurs, of course, don't have two. They have four in two sets. So how do they interact with each other? To get an idea of how that might work, we can look at something that we're all familiar with, the flight of geese. It turns out that when large birds flap their wings, a circulation of air is generated. The portion that is rising is called the upwash, where the portion that is sinking is called the downwash. The lift provided by upwash is generated behind and to the outside of the leading bird. So that becomes the place where the following birds hang out, reducing the work that they have to do as they're using the mechanically generated cushion of air from the lead bird. To maximise the lift, not only do the birds get in line, but they also flap their wings at the same time as the lead bird. If they drift into the downwash, directly behind the leading bird, they flap at precisely opposite times, which is thought to reduce the effect of downwash for the following birds. Since the lead bird is the one doing the most work, leaders rotate positions to conserve energy, and this distributes the workload amongst the whole flock. In terms of pliosaurs, this effect has been extensively studied by Dr. Luke Muscat from the University of Southampton in his research paper, The Four Flipper Swimming Method of Pliosaurs Enabled in Efficient and Effective Locomotion. What Dr. Muscat found was that the figure of ape motion, which is found in turtles as well as bees and penguins, created vortexes where the following pairs of fins avoided the vortex with their swimming motion, and this gave them an increase in efficiency and led to a 50% increase in thrust and a 50% increase in efficiency, which is huge and was probably one of the major factors that contributed to the position that the pliosaur occupied as an apex predator. 
Now I for one find all of that super interesting in and of itself. But what holds the water holds the air and this is found in birds, beasts and even insects. So it does beg the question for me at least, is the same thing true for something like a wind turbine? Well, turns out it is. <laughs> Normally, with a rotor like this, then you're limited by the bet's limit. There's nothing you can do about it, it's just the physics of everything. And everybody is searching for a way to beat the bet's limit because you can improve the efficiency of a wind turbine. You'll never do it with just a rotor like that. But you can do it. You can do it if you do things like use a duct, because a duct collects a greater area of uh, a greater area of wind and so you are effectively using a larger blade if you like and so it looks like you're beating it. Another way of beating it is with something like this, a dual rotor. These dual rotors are so efficient that they're in fact the hot topic in wind research at the moment. If you put in dual rotor wind turbine into a Google search you'll find a lot of information about this particular kind of wind turbine and how good it really is. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's lighting. Wow. You can, that, that is wow. Look at that, that's lighting beautifully, actually. <laughs> Man, that's really cool. Isn't that lovely? That's beautiful. It is actually, yeah. So that came from plyosaurs, and who would have thought it? But it just goes to show really that inspiration is found absolutely everywhere, even in things that you don't think are going to be any use to you. So look, that's the answer. If you want something, look around you because it's amazing how these solutions have already been found. We just forget to look. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.